All right, back in the shop here with my best buddy. Um, here's my chicken scratch of uh, bore diameter at uh, 90 degrees from each one. Just used a piece of crap telescopic gauge and then uh, ran the micrometer down on it for each measurement. It's really close. Uh, the biggest variance I have was uh, six tenths of a thou on number four. Came in at uh, 4.1548 and 4.1542. So this was a uh, board with a torque plate. So my question is, for no reason, I mean, I believe everything and I'm sure it's more than correct but I'm just wondering if I should see more variants since it was cut with the torque plate with the torque plate off I don't know uh, is that something I should see more of a variance between or not because I thought that was the whole purpose of the torque plate was to keep everything really circular because everything eggs out when there is no when there are no heads on the block uh, based off this and you know my theme of the month is saying that my measurements are nothing compared to what the machine shop has anyway but this is really really close like I said so um, tomorrow night I'm going to do the bore gauge stuff anyway and um, well do the dial bore gauge and then then I can go with my piston clearance at least and uh, see where that gets me but uh, my main sort of concern or question is as far as the bore gauge, should I should I average these two measurements for each cylinder, or should I just average all eight? I mean, I figure I could probably average all eight because once again, I'm defaulting back to the machine shop being correct, anyways. Um, my theory is I could average all eight cylinders, then zero the bore gauge on the micrometer and then go through and do my clearance cylinder for cylinder. I mean, technically I could average uh, my cross section of each cylinder, but it's so minimal, like I said, it's like two tenths of a thou, three tenths of a thou, you know? Uh, like I said, the largest one was six, and this was spot on, so um, is it really worth it? Is it something to consider, or uh, am I really just trying to go through you know, and anyway, I just overkill on this thing, but it'd be good if someone could answer that question. Look, that's pretty much it for tonight. Hey, what are you doing? Sit. Go on, get me a beer. Get me a beer. Get me a beer. Go on, bring it. Keyshawn, get me a beer. Don't look at me like that. Let's go, I'm thirsty. Give me a beer. Go on, give me a beer. Oh. oh man, good help's hard to find. So, that's uh, where it's at. Anyway, any uh, answers or, oh, here it is, good boy, don't drop it. Oh, oh my God, good boy. Look at that. Good boy. Hi. Do you want some of this shitty Taco Bell burrito? Hmm? There you go. Good boy. Jerk. He's only in it for the Taco Bell. Uh, anyway. So if someone can give me a heads up or I don't know, in someone's experience maybe uh, I can get some advice on you know, what, what are the differences what sort of difference should I see between something that's bored with the torque plate and something that's not uh, I would think that anything cut without a torque plate would be more circular because its native stance is going to be round like this and it's going to be cut circular but then with the torque plate, if it's cut with the plate on and then the plate's taken off, 
I would think that's when it would egg out. Once again, none of this is really necessary for this thing to operate under the conditions it's going to operate under anyway, but it's more, I'm just trying to learn uh, beyond what I know or the usual stuff and just get a little more detail on this. Uh, so help me out if you can. Really appreciate it. All right. Cheers.